This is an OSU update. I'm Jenny Carlson here with OSU beat writer Scott Wright. Scott, NFL Draft now behind us and a couple Cowboys taken as we expected they would be. Both were third day picks, but um, some decent uh, landing spots for both these guys. Let's start with Justice Hill, fourth round guy. He ends up going to the Baltimore Ravens. Apparently everybody with Oklahoma college connections plays for the Ravens nowadays. But uh, t talk about this pick for the Ravens to, to get Justice, a running back, we know that sometimes running backs can fall a little bit in the draft, but how does this pick fit uh, in your mind, Justice Hill to Baltimore? It's, it's really kind of ideal situation for Justice because he's coming into a team that their leading rusher that's returning and Gus Andrews is a big guy, 238 pounds, six foot one. They also signed Mark Ingram, who is, is not as big at 5'9", 215, but, but a power runner. That's what he's known for. He had all that success in New Orleans being paired with Alvin Kamara, who was the speed guy. And this, uh, this roster right now in Baltimore doesn't have a speed guy. And Justice Hill has a chance to really fit into that role and be that guy for this team right now. And when you factor in uh, all the speed that they look to add on, uh, in this draft, then you've got Lamar Jackson at quarterback, the different things that they can do with him. Justice has a chance to really step into a, a prominent role, um, you know, not necessarily an every down back type of, of a role, but a, but a big role with this offense and be an impact player, the, uh, the, the home run hitter type of guy that can uh, get out and do some things in space and, uh, and, and let those big guys handle some of the dirty work between the tackles. So it's a, it's a really good opportunity for him to, uh, to get some action right away and, and, and be able to be an impactful player. A guy that can also catch it out of the backfield, mm -hmm. which is another valuable skill. Jordan Brailford, uh, not only a, a Cowboy teammate, but a Booker T. Washington, <laughs> Tulsa a high school teammate of uh, Justice Hills. Brailford gets picked by the Washington Redskins. Almost Mr. Irrelevant, one spot mm -hmm. from the last pick of the draft, but still uh, Washington going after Brailford. How does this pick fit? You know, again, Brailford may be in the same vein as Justice, not an every down type of guy, but mm -hmm. how does he fit with what the, what the uh, Washington uh, folks already have up there? It'll be interesting to see what direction this goes because they have a lot of young guys in that defensive front already. And, uh, and they drafted Mont Montez Sweat in the first round from Mississippi State, uh, a guy that was uh, a lot higher on a lot of people's boards just athletically, but has some off-field issues. Uh, so there's going to be some competition for, for playing time at, at those outside linebacker spots. That is one thing I think that will help Jordan Brelford is that this is a team that runs the 3-4. I think that uh, at 6-3 and 250 pounds, as athletic as he was, as what he showed us in his, uh, in his junior season, I think that he has a chance to be a more impactful player at the, at the next level in a 3-4 as an outside linebacker, a stand-up edge rusher. So we'll see what kind of opportunities he gets, uh, what they uh, exactly decide to do with him. But uh, the, it, it is a little bit, a uh, little bit of a logjam with some young guys, and it's going to be a, a really competitive, uh, I would say, mini camp and uh, and and going on into uh, you know into fall camp for for those guys in that in that defensive line unit in Washington because there are a lot of guys that that are are still hungry and want to play. What about some other Cowboys that uh, signed? undrafted free agent deals uh, some notables obviously Taylor Cornelius probably tops that list yeah absolutely gonna go uh, go hang around with with Aaron Rodgers for a while not so a that's, bad gig right that's there that's not bad at all <laughs> heading to the Green Bay Packers yeah. and, and then you've got uh, um, Britton Abbott was was one that uh, that anybody who watched OSU's pro day was kind of hoping that he would get a chance because he came out and did so much he he uh, was catching passes he was uh, he was running well uh, you know he played that cowboy back almost a fullback type of position uh, for Oklahoma State for for so long, uh, he went out with uh, with the punters and was the was the deep snapper for the day at, at pro day. This was a guy who's doing everything he can to make himself uh, available to a team, and and the New York Giants went and, and snagged 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 him. Uh, Tyron Johnson, another one that uh, that might have been hanging around there for a possible draft spot late in the draft. Uh, talented wide receiver, left a year early. It didn't work out for him that in, in that scenario, but gets picked up by the Houston Texans. Uh, a good place to be if you're a, if you're a wide receiver. So um, some some good uh, good spots for a few guys. Uh, Cleveland Browns picked up uh, Jarrell Owens as a defensive end. They obviously just uh, just got rid of Emmanuel Logba, so I guess they needed to fill another spot with an Oklahoma State <laughs> defensive end. And uh, and Justin Phillips, a guy that uh, that was a, a little bit a little bit curious because he didn't do a whole lot of uh, of, of pre-draft workouts. He wasn't at pro day, things like that. Uh, but he gets a, a shot with the Dallas Cowboys. 
All right. Well, rookie mini camps are out on the horizon. We'll continue to follow these early days of uh, NFL careers for these guys. So be sure to stay with the best coverage team anywhere at newsok.com and every day in the Oklahoman.